Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here, and I'm back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more as play of Kirby's Dream Land 3 for the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom. So last time we actually did tackle through World 4 by the looks of, um, Cloudy Park. And even now, no, today for this episode is the fact that we're going to be moving on into the final world before the true final world in the game, excluding if you're actually trying to able to get yourselves all of the hard stars, but even then now that we can able to actually jump into world 5. Now, I just want to cloud things out right away though, at the end of this video, I'm actually going to be doing this quite significantly different between, um, in comparison to how it does it in the previous Kirby Let's Plays at this point, most notably, uh, actually I'll talk more details until we actually get into this world right there, but in forms of level 5, Iceberg. Another similar world name as of how it does in Kirby's Dream Land 2, except the fact that it was originated in World 4, but now it's World 5 instead. So even now, let's get started, but in forms of the first level in Iceberg, and as you can tell, we're actually almost nearly towards and, uh, King DDD's tower, which even then know, probably will stop me we can actually get into it at this point in time. So, anyway though, um, as far as this particular uh, first level suggests is the fact that this might actually be the final time we're going to be doing with the flower type missions because it just gets a little bit more it's nothing too difficult or anything it's just that you need to be very very cautious and be careful at the same time when it comes to able to doing those specific tasks like this so speaking of which uh, one of the flowers name was actually forms of cargo Ishiro, which even then now, that might be something that was worth mentioning, so even then I was one of pointing things out. So, now, as, I, as far as I've mentioned this before, that at the end of this video, I'm actually going to be doing something significantly different. Is that, originally I was trying to able to actually tackle through, um, uh, the King DDD boss fight during the likes of this episode. I'm actually going to be doing something completely different this time around, because, you know how the fact that compared to how it does in new forms of the first Dreamland game, and especially noticeable in Kirby's Adventure, and Kirby Streamland 2 in a dark castle, and even especially noticeable in Kirby Superstar Let's Play to actually tackle the majority of the games in Kirby Superstar, I'm actually going to be saving King Diddy D boss until when we get to the next video, because, um, the thing is about the true final level in the game, that is by far the shortest level in the entirety of the game, so I might actually, there's a perfect example of how the fact that I might actually save that up until when we actually get into the next video, because, well, obviously, I'm still actually recording those longer videos and stuff like that, but anyways, let's get into the actual mission of, uh, mission's objective is. Uh, basically, you know these flowers right there, they usually got frozen? Well, that's what the fire ability comes into play. So even I know, once you're able to actually melt down these ice, this means that those flowers will become fresh again. So even I know, it somewhat feels a bit similar to cleaning the dust off in the forms of these flowers in the forms of Cloudy Park, except the fact that we need to melt the ice. Uh, one of the things about these flowers though is that much like in any other uh, flower based missions is the fact that we don't able to accidentally trot on them because if you accidentally do that then you have to redo the entire level again which even though you don't want to let that happen don't you. And especially noticeable since um, you know mushrooms in the forms of world 3 but that's as how as I can think about it so anyway as far as iceberg is concerned as you expect it is basically the ice themed worlds even then no. It feels kind of like similar to how it does in Kirby Street Land 2, except the fact the matter is, it might be slightly easier, but at the same time it gets really really harder this time around, because even then though, since we're at the very end of the game already, instead of like the middle portion of the game, unlike how it does in Kirby Street Land 2, but still it can't deny by the fact that the difficulty will start to increase later on, so I digress. As far as I've realized about something, I don't have that much extra lives, unlike how it does it in Kirby's Dream Land 2. Now, because of how the fact that in Kirby's Dream Land 2, uh, you can only get, like, um, I would classify for saying, um, 8 or 7 stars, until you're able to actually get yourselves extra lives so easily, but in this game, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, you need to collect about 30 star points until, until you're able to get yourselves extra lives. Uh, that, that is exactly, uh, feels exactly the same concept as whenever when, um, Super Monkey Ball, son of a- <sighs> I hate these little vampires. Even then, no, I think this is probably due to my wind currents. Even then, we're actually going to be fighting against with the strong wind there. So even then, no, that's my- that's totally my fault there, right there. And especially noticeable with the enemy behavior, that's all because of that though. So even then, no, I always get hit by these stuff, so... 
Anyway, though, so... Plus, also, is it just me, or is it every time when I was gonna be, um, nearly towards the end of a level, I always died at the very end of a level, which... I know it sounds a little bit too more much of a hypocrite, mind you, but it's just the hell of the fact that I just wasn't really that... I wasn't really too much in tension with that particular enemy encounters. Thank you, I need that one up back. Alright, so here that does it for this mission out of the way, in addition to the first level in Iceberg, and now we move on to... Well, this image looks familiar. But even then, though, we'll see what happens until we're able to actually get to this mission, actually, in the forms of the second level. Hopefully, we can able to actually come across into something, because... Uh, you never heard the fact that back in during the likes of Kirby Superstar, aka Kirby's Fun Pack in Europe, um, the biggest example I can think of is the forms of, well, Spring Breeze by the forms of Fighting King Diddy D, that normally has Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad around here. I don't know about Wario though, because I wasn't paying attention by the forms of the right side of the boxing arena, and, um, even then, that, um, especially noticeable in the Great Cave Offensive, because in the Great Cave Offensive, does have a lot of Nintendo references. Like, for example, um, if I can give you the clue what this mission is based off from, um, you know how the fact that you remember the, uh, the screw attack ball by the forms of the Great Cave Offensive, that we've got that in the forms of the spring area, or in this case, uh, I don't know which, uh, area do I like to record that, but, um, basically, it's kind of like that, but except the fact that, well, I don't know about you, oh, crap. So yeah, the car BBRZ we do need is Ice, or Freeze as well as known as, but unfortunately since I've actually lost that due to really, really random enemy behaviour in this game, um, I just somehow lost it. Well, I just did not notice there's actually a spare one over there, but I need more health than the likes of how it does it with um, less health, so... Oh, jeez. Things can get really, really difficult later on when it comes to the quest system, or in this case, the mission structure, but that's just how it is when it comes to games like this, so anyway. But even then, though, we're so close towards the end, so even then, though, that um, as you expected, as far as this was is concerned, it might be really, really difficult as far as later proceedings throughout, so anyway. You have to jump for um, treetops and everything. And also be very careful, by the way, because this little cloud will about to be able to block your, um, uh, precision stuff, and it's especially noticeable you don't, uh, um, get left behind from there, because you will lose your tracking, so let's enter this door here. And this is a perfect example, we need a freeze ability in the first place, or the ice ability, I should say. And, uh, before we continue, I'm actually gonna be grabbing, um, I'm also able to actually keep a hold of my animal companion. Um, in fact, it's gonna be on this door over there. And in fact, let's go ahead and take... Uh, we'll save, um, Neko for later, until level 5, because I'll still talk more on that until when we get to level 4. So anyways, though. So let's take, uh, Pitch the Bird right there, so just in case we can able to actually use the Ice, um, Flower right there. And, um, hopefully we can able to actually do this mission task. Now, you know one of those alcove doors that we're about to be entering right about now? Guess what we actually come across? Are you familiar with these enemies yet? These are Metroids. Hmm, that looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? Because that's actually a reference to the Metroid series, ever since, you know, for the likes of the original Metroid, Metroid 2, Return of Samus, and especially Super Metroid, which is really, really awesome. But even then, I can't wait to see how this will actually turn out to be. So, somehow for this mission objective is the fact that we need to able to freeze and destroy those Metroids, because if you ever played Metroid before, even for, um... You know, the original Metroid, Metroid 2, and especially noticeable in Super Metroid, uh, basically, those Metroids will be completely, um, invulnerable to the forms of, well, ice, because that way it just deals the damage, especially with these missile attacks, so... Basically, all you have to do in this particular mission task, still, you might get sucked in every once in a while, but thankfully, though, unlike Metroid, by the forms of the Metroid games, you don't actually get yourselves your health sucking up. So even then, that's the only good thing. So even then, though, no, it just only just stuns you, and that's about it, so... And I think you do need to defeat about, let's just say, six Metroids, because if you do manage to do this, then you would able to accomplish this mission, so... I wonder what, um, character we actually bump into, I wonder. Well, we'll never find out until we're able to finish this level, so, um... Of course, there's a uh, of course there's a bit of a weird section right there, because we actually bump into the actual, um... Uh, 
uh, magma section, which even then, though, no, wait, is this like fire and ice syndrome or something? But anyway, uh, we're gonna leave, uh, pitch the bird for now on, because now we, uh, can able to actually just finish the levels normal with the forms of Kirby himself, and sometimes I get, um, eaten by this little mantra guys right from the start, and that wasn't fair, oh, that is not fair, because even then, though, no, that can really, uh, devastate my health or what have you, which even then, um, just like how it does in new forms of Dark Castle or new forms of Kirby Streamland 2 is that this world can get really, really ridiculously hard sometimes. Like, so many enemies, so many, um, um, death traps, or so many ways to die around here, which even then, as you expect, is the final main world. If you don't collect all of the rainbow- no, not rainbow drops. I kept on thinking of the forms of Kirby Streamland 2 for some reason, but with star hearts in general. So anyways, oh, hello there, Samus Aram. Thank you for that little, um, uh, star heart right there, so I would appreciate it with that particular gift, and I'll see you in the Super Smash Bros. game. Well, it wasn't until 1999, that is. So even though that's the only, um, time where Kirby managed to meet up with Metroid, or in this case, just meet up with Samus, in a fighting game of Super Smash Bros. So even though that would be very, very cool. And in this case, Samus around, that's the forms of that particular character's NPC character we actually bump into and you form to the very end of the second level. So yeah, that was pretty awesome there So now we move on to level three and uh, this is where the um, uh, The level cell is as you expect it gets really difficult because now we actually come across into ice physics this time around and um, You know just like how it does in the forms of Kirby Streamland 2 ice physics can be a huge problematic so anyways though, uh, the NPC character we actually bump into is the forms of, um, Sheriff, uh, Kowski, which even then, no, I totally forgot to pronounce that particular last name, so I must admit that I apologize for all that budget right there. So anyway, um, so yeah, for the most part though, it's basically the final time we're going to be doing with that particular minigame task. But I will say though is that this was probably is by far the hardest minigame challenge in the entire game because um, if you think about like trying to able to counting every single um, different colored uh, Gordos was hard enough, well prepare yourselves is probably the most difficult minigame uh, challenge in the entire game because you can definitely tell why once we're able to reach into um, um, Sheriff, or in this case, Sheriff Ka um, Kowski, which even then, though, that might be sounds illogical for that point. But anyways, let's go ahead and just use our combination powers between Cody Owl, and especially noticeable with that particular cutter ability, which even then, though, that would be very, very recommendable. But unfortunately, though, this particular section is entirely water-based, so I kind of wish if Kind will be makes an appearance, though, kind of think about it, though, which I would appreciate it by this fact. In addition to that though, oh we got ourselves a Waddle Dee's paddling the boat again, that's pretty cute, and also pretty awesome at the same time. Ah, oh, how do I miss that? Ah, oh, that's not good. Ah, oh, god dang it. Oh, there's a maximum smart right there, but um, oh, no way, no way. You've gotta be kidding me. You've gotta be kidding me. Are you for real, man? Are you for real? Is it this free? I mean, seriously, what's going on with enemies sometimes in this game? They're all, like, really, really masterful right there. I mean, like, it's like, it's so hard to tell what you ever trying to think about the enemy contact or what have you. I mean, I can get hit most of the time in the underwater because they're always trying to home in on me. Because it really is. I mean, it's the worst part about this game for me, because it's such a worst part about the game for me, because I can't really tell how the fact that those enemies are directly homing on me, and as a result, I can get hit quite a few times. Well, despite the lack of block button by the forms of Kirby Superstar, man, I really do miss that ability. But luckily though, until when it gets to Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland on the Game Boy Advance, eventually, and even Kirby and Amazing Mirror also on the Game Boy Advance, hopefully we'll get ourselves a block system back. So, everything else will be twice as comfortable as for it used to be become like this, so... Anyway, now, let's go ahead and just go float above from it, ignore these enemies entirely, if I'm able to don't die right there, that's my only question. So, um, yeah, in regardless of anything else for today, um... Yeah, so as far as I was trying to say, but it forms about the fact that I'm going to do something completely different about this particular ending portion of this video, by the way, folks, is that... 
You know, I would normally try to able to actually deal with King DDD at the very end of this particular video, but I decided to save that because uh, until the next video, because, um, well, it, uh, at least if you actually access to all of these, um, heart stars, uh, the true final level in the game is definitely is the shortest level of the bunch, just because of how the fact that, well, you can definitely tell why once we're able to get to that. And plus, second of all, I think trying to deal with double boss fights might be an I um, iconic way for me, though, because I haven't done that for quite some time, since, um, I was classified for, um, just saying, like, a Sonic game or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. But anyways, though, I decided to be able to do that. But although this might be the only time we're going to be able to do it with that particular method, until the future games, now I might as well able to, or we, rather, might as well stuck with as usual, so even then, though, we can able to complete the entire world in the process. So anyways though, uh, this level, it might be a little bit longer, although somewhat a bit longer than the likes of the third world, and especially noticeable in the sec uh, the fourth world as well. But even then though, the major premise of this is the forms of how the fact that how long these levels will take now, so even then though, yeah. Anyways, let's get this started by the forms of this, this particular challenge right there. So yeah, speaking of which, is that this particular minigame challenge is by far the toughest of the bunch in the game, because all you have to do in this particular task is basically a sound quiz, because even though, no, if you follow those sounds correctly, then you would able to actually get yourselves correct. So even though, no, what makes it a little bit difficult about this minigame than the likes of any other minigames of all that stuff, again, if you messed up one question, you get kicked out. And if you actually get into the second round, and if you get it wrong, you also get kicked out. You pretty much need to be perfect in every single um, answers you get in this goddamn minigame right there. But even then, as long as you're able to pay attention with sound, so that way you can able to actually get yourselves a hard start once you get to the very end of the level. So even then, no. So yeah, that is definitely is by far the toughest one of the bunch, just because of how the fact that, well, first off, it's incredibly fast, and also you lose your concentration if you manage to able to don't know what you're doing. And um, plus, in addition to that, though, um, Sometimes that, um, that particular, um, sound will actually become random, which even then, though, that might be sounds, well, convenient, that was, especially noticeable compared to how it does in luck-based minigames in the forms of Mario Party, but even then, though, that's as far as I can tell what that situation will become. So anyways, though. So, for the most part, I think we've almost there for the most part, though, into the, towards the very end, despite getting hit most of the time, which I'm really not a big fan of. But, as you expect, it's just the final level in the game, obviously, so even though it's expected to make this significantly harder than the likes of Kirby's Dream Land 2 counterparts, so I'm gonna say that much until now. So, yeah, you get the idea what this particular world is gonna be, it's basically it's gonna be a lot more tougher, and there we go, we've reached the very end of a level. So yeah, I think we're on the halfway point of the forms of the Heart Stars collecting, which even then, though, specifically, not only for, um, we actually got ourselves, um, I could assuming we've actually got 27 Heart Stars, but we've only got three more left in the forms of the entire game, and even the halfway portion in the forms of World 5. So, here we go, on to level 4. In this one, we need to able to collect, I'm assuming a clamshell. Because that's the entire impression of this mission will be all about. So basically what we have to do, I think we should able to deal with, I would classify for saying fire is the recommendation with the forms of the copy ability itself. And um, aside from the fire copy ability, we also do need, oh god, I'm gonna die again, aren't I? Oh jeez, I hate when this happens right there, but even then now you can definitely tell why as soon as we're able to actually get into this kind of stuff. Oh, let's just... I hate things like that, as far as I said this before, just because it's really hard to tell. Although I'm not a, usually a casual player or anything like that, it's just that so many times I've found myself keep on getting hit most of the time with those enemies. And I would appreciate it if the block button makes it appear, but... The, well, you see, because of the limitations, thanks to the forms of the actual similar premise of the forms of Kirby's Dream Land 1 and 2, and even forms of Kirby's Adventure, mind you, but... Even though it's just really, really confusing sometimes. But anyways, we got that at least by the forms of fire. And we do need to keep that at all times until we're able to bump into uh, Cody out and especially noticeable with Choo Choo, believe it or not. Because even then, though, we can able to guarantee of what is coming up. So even then, though, that we need obviously fire ability, which is pretty much common. And um, also two animal buddies we're going to be using for this particular 
uh, mission structure, which even then, though, in order to actually deal with this mission is the fact that we need to collect a clamshell, or in this case, just the actual premise of this shell itself, which, kind of looks of it, though, it, 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 like, I don't know. So the actual premise of the NPC character in this level of Pichigo was actually named Tansuri, which I, again, I must apologize for that um, error translation by the forms of these actual names themselves, but I must confess right about now. So anyways, we need Cody out as far as, the, as far as the first part of this particular level itself, and um, now you're probably thinking, what about Choo Choo, you're wondering? Well, it wasn't until a couple of rooms later, because... Obviously, we need to be very careful right there, because obviously, if you can tell already, uh, it's going to be very, 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 very tricky by the forms of this level in particular, because we're going to come across into a lot of hazards. Mainly, uh, these little icicle forms, even icicles falling down from the ceiling, and even especially noticeable by the forms of these little Muncher Piranha um, um, enemies like that. But even then, no, we'll just have to see what happens there. Anyways, let's go ahead and fly down carefully without even getting hit too many times by the forms of these icicles falling down from the, uh, you know, up above the ceiling and stuff like that. So, yeah, what else do I can say about this particular portion of the very end of the game, um, honestly? Because even then, though, we pretty much almost need towards the end of this, um, this game's let's play, and until then, I can't believe we're actually breezing for this game super duper fast at this point, until when it gets to the next Kirby installment, but it forms of now jump into 3D. Well, this might be the only time we might actually jump into 3D Kirby game. Well, it might be still a 2D platforming game, but it's more accurately 2.5D platformer, as far as I'm like, concerned about this. But anyway, kind of like how it does it in your forms of before the new Super Mario Bros. games exist, and even especially noticeable in the future installments until Nintendo Wii, Nintendo 3DS, and recently Nintendo Switch installments. So, that's pretty obvious there. Here's the most annoying room, by the way. <laughs> uh, I must have uh, said this about sooner or later ago for about a few separate times there, so even then, no. Uh, because the reason premise for this is, is the fact that we need to dodge a lot of these mantras right there, because if you screwed up at least once, in fact, I almost died there, that uh, if you screwed up at least one or twice, then you pretty much have to do the entire level again and hopefully try to get, get yourselves a uh, Cody out again, or especially knows the way with Choo Choo, which we'll get into later. Alright, so from here, this is the perfect example we need fire ability in addition to Code Yao in the first place is because I think the room we need to get into is this door right there. Because if you actually get into the wrong way, then you're probably not going to get the show in time. So if you know, that's the only example I can just try to able to think about this particular method. So anyways, we actually bump into uh, Choo Choo now. And um, basically what we need to do is basically we need to uh, press the jump button and the copy ability button at the same time. So that way we can actually float above. So even though normally we can't able to actually use fire in the, um, the you know, the horizontal, or in this case the vertical position. So you have to do this twice by the way before you're able to get yourselves a collectible item. Because if you accidentally enter one of those doors there, uh, you're probably not going to get the collectible throughout. So let's go ahead and go all the way up. And hopefully we can able to actually enter this door here. And that is where we're able to actually get ourselves the so as I disable Choo Choo. There we go. We got ourselves a shell. So now we can actually bring that back into that particular NPC character, as far as I've already mentioned this before. But first, before we do anything, we got to deal with this particular snowball enemy first. Well, it needs to be more specifically, uh, the snowball mini boss, which even I know I'm having trouble at the moment because um the only thing you need to be very cautious about this is that as soon as his eyes shown up, that means it's your chance to attack him, which even then, uh, when it goes disappeared, um, it will not count as the attack though, on the other hand, so that's pretty much obvious with that point with number, so anyways. Ooh, that's a nice one. Yeah, I like the way how it looks, although unfortunately though, I've only have one unit of health left, so in that case, I might just rather die right there, so that's a bit of a nuisance. Oh, this is the point I'm going to be dying at any point of view, especially noticeable in this world's case, because as you expected, uh, the way the enemies, uh, how they look, or in this case, well, I could appreciate it if I was trying to able to actually just trying to bring my animal body with me to make this section really, really easier, but of course I wasn't expecting surely because, first off, I don't have my freeze ability back, and um, that's about it, so that's a bit of a waste. So anyways, uh, let's talk about um, the forms of level 5-5 when we get into after this level's finished. 
Uh, level 5 5, as you expected from any other level 5 levels, is basically an animal, uh, taking your animal buddy all the way to the very end of a level syndrome. Uh, I managed to do these things no problem, but in forms of any other previous worlds, no problem. However, though, um, in this particular, uh, next, uh, mission I'm gonna be doing right about now, um, I'm actually gonna be cutting the footage right there, so that I can get myself, uh, Miko the cat right there. So I hope you might as well able to actually get him there, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Alright, so I'm jump cut right there, so anyways, let's get started by the forms of level 5-5. Five five mission. God. I'm gonna have to say this right about now, this is one of the hardest, um, What's well, not something difficult or anything like that, unlike how it does it in Rick the Hamster's uh, mission. But on the other hand though, in my opinion, this is by far the toughest mission in the entire game in my opinion. Just because, first off, we're actually going to be able to actually come towards this particular level right there, in the forms of level 5-5. Which as you expect, it, much like how it does in the forms of Kirby's Dream Land 2 Dark Castle um, 6, is the fact that we're actually going to be doing with a lot of enemies. In this case, every single enemy is in the entire game. And as you expected, that uh, we need to basically, we need to bring uh, Nico the cat all the way to the very end of a level until we actually bump into um, uh, Shiro, which even though that is basically a female white cat. So that's pretty obvious, that's the reason why we need him in the first place. But there's one major gripe I have with this. The first off, or actually, there's actually uh, three negative things I can think about this challenge for me, in my opinion. First off, the level itself is significantly longer than any other levels out there. And secondly, you've only have to do this um, stage within one attempt. I say one attempt because if you made one simple mistake, if you accidentally die in the level when you carry um, Nico the cat, then you have to do the entire level again. And uh, to make matters worse, um, three is the fact there's too much enemies on screen, and plus it gives you some cheap uh, placement right there by the forms of these little waddle dee balloons. Although, there's actually the whole balance of stars down there, but honestly, I'd probably not recommend these, unless if I was trying to able to get my extra life back. So yeah, um, yeah, you need, you do need to keep him at all times in this level, which, by the way, for those of you who might have able to actually point out for a fourth part about I hate about this challenge, is that the reason number four, uh, Nico the Cat was unavailable in this level, so you have to get him in the any other level, so... As a result, that's the reason why I despise this mission so much. Well, it's not something difficult as I mentioned earlier, because as far as for the looks of it though, luckily though, there aren't any bottomless pits this time around, which is a good thing. But apart from that, too much enemies, too much hazards, and basically you're gonna have to go through everything in this level, because even though, again, if you screw up at least once or twice, especially noticeable if you accidentally lose a life, you have to redo the entire level again with Nako the cast, because again, if you messed up, then you have to do the entire mission again, because even though, that's whenever I got, managed to get stuck on, whenever I first time playing the game, Although it's not so much on the Wii's virtual console though, because I've, um, that was actually my completely blind uh, back then, because I did manage to first got this game, Baddy Forms of 2009, when this, when this first came out. In this case in England, but it, for the very first time. But on the other hand though, this is the point I've actually got into in the Wii U version of the game, because... Jesus Christ, too much enemy contact, and especially noticeable... I think the worst defender about this is the forms of the cannonball room, because... You know how the fact that the cannonballs will directly aim at you at all times? Well, I would say though, this is probably is the most toughest part about this room, or in this case, the toughest part about this level, because, um, you know, you can definitely tell why when we get into that, so... So yeah, for the most part though, it's not too bad in some of these rooms, unless if we actually get into the more tougher rooms until we get to later on, after these little snowman enemies that we can actually bypass through any time being. So, anyway, let's go and freeze them and just kill another one as ever. Okay, right there. Here we have ourselves a cannonball room. But even then though, the actual premise of hit detection, especially with the lack of bits ability frames, is really lacking here. Like that! Stupid cannonball. <sighs> I can't it right there. Alright, so it turns out that I accidentally killed the uh, the fire enemy ever since the very beginning of the actual level. But it turns out Nico the cat, in addition to fire combination, it's a godsend because 
no matter what though, that it actually decides to able to kill every single enemies with ease. So I must admit though right away that was my that was my mistake as well. So even though that's the uh well, the only premise of accidental stuff we can actually come in towards into those kinds of stuff, so Oh god, how far I'm in this level am I? Because again, as far as I mentioned to you earlier ago, this is really, really long. And even then though that it, it, again, you need to be able to actually take you know, Nico the cat at the very end of the level still, but, oh god, that was close. And as a result, again, if you die at least once with Nico the cat, in addition to your combat abilities as well, then you pretty much have to go back to the world's map and select whatever levels you have to go into, but again, since if you manage to accidentally exit out the level without any checkpoints, um, you need to travel all this bull crap again. Which, even now, it does remind me of something related to getting to the Great Palace in the forms of Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. That's for, for my circumstances there. And even especially noticeable by the forms of the Death Mountain in the forms of the original Legend of Zelda game. So, when we have ourselves a replica of me, again. But this time, he's actually walking straight forward now. So, I could never expect it how this little appreciation will turn out to be. But there's no boulders or hazards or anything like that this time, so we can just simply straight in, uh, go straight into this next door. There's no need for these animal bodies right there, because I'm just going to be keeping uh, Nako the cat right there for now, because, again, it's required to able to actually do this in the forms of this mission itself, even for the actual premise of the Heart Star itself. Because what is this? have anything to do with just a long drag out mission and stuff like that. that I mean, oh my god. Oh god. So yeah, no matter what you do though, don't even just try to able to mess things up or what have you too many times, because if you mess up at least, you know, once or twice, or especially with uh, a few times and stuff like that, then, yeah, that's as far as I can see, right? This is how this will turn out. Come on, let this level to be ending. Oh, you're kidding me, there's still more to it. Although, don't get me wrong, this level's kind of cool because it's basically the enemy endurance run, but the, the forms of the mission requirements, holy cow, this just sounds really, really drag on. Come on, let the level end. You're kidding me, there's still more to it. And to make matters worse, I've almost going to be dying at any point, because if I, die, if I die again, this means I have to go for all this slog again. Which, even enough, that, uh, let me tell you right off the bat though, uh, this particular, uh, hard style requirements is something somewhat similar to how it does it in the forms of Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, the level called, um, Cohort Crash, that another level that you can actually get inside in a fourth warp room, and then, no matter what though, uh, depends on how much boxes you've destroyed, will actually gives you a massive flip out if you manage to Ableton missing one of them. So even then though, without a doubt in my mind for this point folks, at least as far as my own opinion of this, this is by far the worst stage, even for the worst mission in the entirety of the Kirby series. But don't get me wrong, I still, um, I still enjoy the mission structure, but this mission alone can take me off. But anyways, now we got ourselves a hard start right there. You know what though, we'll just say we'll go ahead and just say release to you right now, missus. I just had a lot of a long stretch of road for that long road trip. Or in this case, a long tr road tr trip right there. Sorry for a little bit of a tantrum right there. So anyways, now we're finally done with this mission. But with that being said, folks, we've only got one last main platforming level out of the way, and that's the forms of level 6 in Iceberg. And the NPC character this time around is an angel. Because, well, you see why in just a moment as soon as we actually get to this level now. Uh, basically, uh, level 6 in the forms of Iceberg, as you expect it, much like in how it does it in level 6 and 7 in the forms of Dark Castle and Kirby Streamland 2, it's basically a mini fight endurance run. So even though we have to fight every single mini bosses from the past few worlds, and then depends on what corresponding copy abilities you're going to be using. I think that's a perfect example of that hint of that uh, mission objective we're going to be doing within this particular mission. In fact, this might actually be the last mission in the entire game before the final boss of the game, excluding the true final boss if you manage to able to get yourselves all the um, the hard stars. So basically, this is how this goes. Basically, we need to able to get ourselves our electricity copy ability first off. And uh, because if we actually exit out this room, here we actually need to collect ourselves feathers. And basically, since all the fact that this game actually contains um, eight copy abilities in this game, this means you need to collect eight feathers in total. 
It might be seems quite a lot, mind you, compared to how it does in new forms of these drop parts ever since during the likes of the final level in the Sand Canyon. But even then, it's quite multitasking there. So basically, what you have to do is basically just defeat as many of those mini bosses as possible. And again, if you actually get yourselves a corresponding, um, or the correct spawning uh, uh, copy ability for your disposal, that means you can get an opportunity to get yourselves a uh, one of your items as being collected. Money forms of feathers, for instance. Like, we've already got one money forms of the, uh, the electricity copy ability, and uh, now we've got ourselves a rock ability money forms of the second feather. But again, if you messed up at least once, if you ever made a simple mistake money forms of that wrong copy ability and you move accidentally used, um, you're probably not gonna get the, um, the mission objective, uh, requirements going on. And much like how it does it in Nico the Cat's, um, you know, the stupid, uh, mission structure quest system, you need to do this in one go, because if you mess up at least once, you have to go back to the beginning of the level. More especially noticeable, you want to be able to, well, a little bit of a cheating going on, but in forms of the safe states, because if you mess up at least once or twice, then you would able to get yourself screwed over. So, anyway, let's go ahead and... Really? Okay, I'm probably not gonna mess up at this time as far as this time forth because I accidentally just killed that mini boss and as far as in the actual process. And the actual ability requires this is basically when you get a pair of cells. So I'm probably still able to actually restart the entire level again. So in case of if I eventually mess up again. So you know what? I'll be right back. <sighs> what is going on with me today? It's nothing like the unlucky day or something. Okay, just two more hit points left. There we go. Discard um rock and then carefully not to accidentally just swallow up the um, the rock ability and there we go. Huh. <sighs> but even though no, as, as long as this level might actually be uh slightly longer than the likes of uh, the previous levels, but still it's incredibly consistent. Anyway. So now we've gone with the um the uh third feather out of the way. Now let's move on to the fourth feather, which actually requires freeze or ice ability. Because if you manage to don't have that, then again, you're probably not gonna get the uh, the feather in time. So even though it's one important exact right away. So anyways though, I found this guy to be really, really difficult to deal with, especially in small rooms like this. I kind of prefer in the actual wider open area. So just in case I would able to attack him there. So anyways, I'm gonna have to leave uh Cody out for now because I probably won't need him for the time being. So anyways, let's go ahead and just repunish my health there and get ourselves our fourth feather. It's only a halfway portion of feathers um, collecting left. So Hopefully we need to get ourselves cutter for this because of the fifth feather. And luckily though, we don't have to deal with the mini boss in that particular area. So that way we can actually get ourselves not only the fifth feather, but also our replenishing health. And uh, speaking of which, we have ourselves the next mini fight. We have ourselves the forms of the brush on the broom uh, mini boss. And to be told, we do need to get ourselves a cleaning ability to begin with, just in case, well, we'll get to that just a moment. And that way, as soon as we actually get ourselves a clinging ability to begin with, then we would able to actually get ourselves our sixth um, feather. And um, truth be told, we've only got, um, well, two more left, which are both uh, Needle and Fire. I'm presuming the last one we need to able to equip the bond is definitely Needle, much like how it does in the forms of Kirby Streamland 2, so to speak, which is kind of odd. But anyways, though, oh, how do I miss that? So anyways though, although this guy's not too much of a problem, it's just how the fact that when it, the way he jumps, um, every time I miss that particular shot of that projectile, it just makes my losing my footing at one point or another, but anyway. Alright, let's see how I can do here, there we go, and we can actually obtain a fire ability, even for a fireball, that way we can get ourselves our seventh feather. And now we got one more feather left, but in forms of, as you expected, we need Needle for this. Because if you don't have Needle with you, or if you accidentally um, get into this next door immediately, uh, soon enough you have to restart the entire level as well. So, uh, this is kind of a multitasking for this point, folks. Uh, it's seriously a multitasking there. So anyways, though, this guy right there, in the forms of Captain Stitch, is not too much of a noticeable, I don't think. Although there are plenty of times I always get hit by this guy sometimes, but in forms of uh, not to register my attacks properly. So there we go. So now we've got ourselves our needle now, so now let's go ahead and obtain the eighth and the final feather until every single mission structure in this game is fully accomplished. So now we've returned all eight of the feathers into the angel, so now the actual angel will fly again. 
And that way we can actually obtain the 30th and the final um, heart star in the entire game. I could prefer I could go for a 1-up right there for a perfect ending by the forms of the gold game. But oh well, whatever. So, with that being said folks, I'm probably not going to be starting the forms of uh, the King DDD fight anytime soon. So join me next time on Let's Play Kirby Streamland 3. It's the fact that we're going to be moving on to face off against with King DDD because I can assume he's up to no good again. As you expect it from any other Kirby stories like this. Even if you actually collect yourselves all 30 of those heart, um, star hearts, this is not the final boss of the game just yet. Because even I know you'll see why in just a moment. So see you guys next time. Later fellas.